This video is going to show you how to add an appliance to your APAT database, any attachments, uh, multiple items, and printing new to service tags. So right now we're going to continue on from our previous video where we added a site with its location of, the, uh, of that site. Now we need to add our appliances. So right now I'm in the office and I wish to add the toaster that I've got hooked up. I have to add, add element, I add the appliance, and then this number here, which is the appliance ID, always relates to the ID number of the appliance, and that will always increment from the last number used if you have the settings set for that. For now, I want to set it to 001. The name, I'm testing a toaster, so that's the description, so toaster goes in, there we go. Location is set to office, which is fine. Our test code relates to what's on your Delta Pat tester. In the shortcut menu, each one of these numbers is a test code that relates to a different type of test for the application, whether or not it's an extended earth bond test, extended leakage test, but in the manual it does bring up those numbers, but it's just as simple to use the simple test menu that we've loaded onto the systems, which I've shown in a previous video on how to edit and change and upload. So moving on back to the tester, we need to select custom test, which is our auto test, select class 1 because we're testing a toaster which is a class 1 device. We've got the retest period. It's set to 12 which I've defaulted in our settings but if it's a 6 monthly test I change it to 6 months and so and so forth. Moving down from there you've got equipment user. This gets added once the actual test has been performed um, and then you'll also notice here under attachments uh, parameters, attachments and measurements you can add additional items. If it were as an attachment I can select this and I can add these items to that particular uh, piece of equipment. Now please note, as it stands, the APAT software doesn't transpose this information across to your reporting, potentially will do in the future, but just for your reference. So going back to where we are, we've got our parameters, we've got all the items, information that we need to get going. I've done my visual inspection on the toaster, I've plugged everything in, so you'll see that the earth leads connected, past its visual, and we're good to go. For us to proceed, I have to hit the start button on the application, which is located at the top right of the screen. It brings up your visual inspection. I hit pass. Now this will do the electrical test without me having to lift a finger. What we need to do though is to create the circuit for the insulation test is press and hold this down. That will pass its insulation test. And as you can see, there's an overall screen here of overall pass with a tick with a green light. Now this is it's really important that you are at this screen. If your test is not at this screen, you have to press the OK button to make sure you are at this screen to print a tag. Otherwise, it doesn't print correct information. So now we're good to go. I hit Print and Save. This will communicate to my printer, and it'll spit out a test tag. There we go. That's done. Now, for you to view those results, you can go to Measurements, and you can see all the tests that were performed on that item. Now, if you were, say, wanting to print a new-to-service tag, so it's something that's new into service, it doesn't need to be electrically tested, all we need to do is go to the location we're in, so we're still in the office, I'm adding an element, I'm adding an appliance, let's just say I'm testing an extension lead. It's item ID number two, so it's done it itself. Under name, I'm going to type in extension lead. Extension lead, there it is. I'm still in the office. The test code I want to do would be a IEC test, but instead of pressing OK to actually do the test, I can actually go straight through and do print new to service. And this will print out a test tag with a new to service label, which we apply to the extension lead, and as per new to service requirements, we do not have to do the electrical test. A great feature that APAT offers is allowing you to add multiple items at one go to save your data entry time. So for example, we're going to be testing, say, three extension leads. We need to select where we want to do the work, so I'm in the warehouse. I'm going to add an element. You'll notice here, multiple. That relates to what we need to do. So select the box, select appliance, and here we go. So I want to add three extension leads. There's no prefix in front of the number, so I'll leave that blank. The starting number, I'll start at three, and I'll make sure there's four digits, so it'll be 0003. Name, I'm going to put extension lead. There it is. I'm in the warehouse. I've noticed here there's a 12 monthly test. Warehouse testing is six months, so I'll change that to six. And then down here you've got your test codes. So I want to select a simple test, 
extension lead. Now when I press OK, in the warehouse we've now created three, four, five. There we go. All we need to do now is go in and hit start and start testing. Once it's completed, you move to the next item, rig everything up for your extension lead test again, and start again. It's as simple as that.